Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to build an appointment database. We'll be able to schedule, track, and print our appointments, tasks, to-do list, all that stuff. We'll build the table, related queries, a continuous form, and of course, a printable report. Today's question comes from Gabriella from St. Pete, Florida, one of my neighbors. She says, I need a simple database to track my upcoming appointments. I've been using Outlook, but I'd like to use Access so I can eventually tie appointments to customers. Can you help me? Well, of course, Gabriella, Access is actually great as an appointment calendar. You can store all kinds of information in there, have different fields you might want, like due dates and priorities and stuff like that. And of course, building it yourself is a whole lot more flexible than using something like Outlook. I used to use uh, Google Calendar for the longest time. In fact, I still do for some personal stuff. But for business stuff, I stick to Access. So let me show you how to do it. So here I am in my Tech Help free template. This database is a free template you can download from my website. I'll put a link down below. Now this database has customers, contacts, orders, and order details. Now to me, you could go into the customer's record, go to contacts, and you could use this table to store information on appointments if you wanted to. But I want it to be a little more flexible, maybe a start time, an end time, a priority, that kind of stuff. So we'll save contacts for just when we talk to people. We'll, we'll use the appointment table to, to store our actual physical appointments when we have to be places and stuff like that. So let's create a new table, create, and then table design. This will be my appointment ID, my appointment table, right? Auto number. We'll have a description of the appointment. That'll be short text. We'll have a start date time and an end date time. Now you can default these if you want to. And this is completely based on your patterns, your business, your however you do things, okay? I'm gonna say for me, hypothetically, let's say whenever I set up an appointment, it's usually for tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, I hate, personally, I hate morning appointments. And I usually only have one or maybe two a day. So I'm going to make my default value equals today's date plus one. So now I'm at tomorrow at midnight. And if I want to make it 1 p.m., I'm going to go plus, in parentheses, 13 divided by 24. All right, what does that mean? Here, I'll zoom in so you can get a good look at it. All right, the date function gives you today's date. So today is what, uh, February 5th? You get February 5th, right? Add one to it. Now I'm at tomorrow, February 6th, at midnight. Remember, date is the date portion only. Now gives you the time. But I want to specify 1 p.m. So then to that, I'm going to add 13, right? 1,300 hours, 24. It's just 24 hours in a day. Divide it up. That's how you can add a time, okay? Yeah, there's functions for that, like date add and stuff like that. But this is nice and simple. Okay, let's save that and make sure it works. Control S to save. This will be my appointment T. All right. And I'm going to close that and open it back up again. And start date time. 2 6 at 1 p.m. Perfect. So anytime you go to add a new appointment, it'll automatically default to tomorrow's date at 1 p.m. All right. Right click, design view. Now, how about the end time? Let's take this guy here, copy it. Let's paste it down here in the default value for this one. And let's say most of my appointments are an hour long. So we'll just make that 1400. Okay. Save it. How about some notes? All right. That'll be a long text field. Now, description is good for showing up in like your list boxes and stuff and a little header on your reports if you want to print stuff out. Notes is where you put all the other stuff, right? Like directions how to get there and any uh, information that you took down. That's what your notes field is for. I throw a notes field in almost every table just in case you want to put some extra information in there. Okay. I'm going to add one more field. Let's put in here priority, and that'll be a number. All right. That way we could put a number in there from like 1 to 10. So let's make the default value 1 or 1 through 4, whatever you want. So that if you want to sort them by priority and see what's coming up that's important, you can. All right. You got a number 10 appointment coming up. You make sure you don't cancel that, whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's save that. And I'm going to put a couple of sample records in here. Let's switch over to table view. All right. Well, let's put some appointments in here. 
Now, normally we don't work with the tables, and you certainly don't want your end users working with tables if you're building this database for other people. But I like to put a couple sample records on my tables as I'm working, just to just to make sure everything's working okay. All right, so tomorrow I got an appointment to uh, talk about uh, PC upgrade. Okay, and uh, you know Jim Smith or whatever. Okay, priority one. Then the next day, let's say I've got um, watch Star Trek <laughs> on two seven at one p.m. Right now, you can do event programming when you get a little more advanced into some VB stuff. All right, you can make it so that if you type in a date time here, it jumps and makes this an hour after that one. Okay, but that involves a little programming. I'll do that in the extended cut for the members. Okay, that involves what's called an after update event. I've got videos on that if you want to go research it on my website. I'll put a link down below to after update events. All right, but I'll have to change this one myself to 2, 7, and then 2 p.m. All right, and that'll be priority five, of course. Okay, just want to put a couple records in here so I've got some data. Now, I want to make a continuous form so that I can open up my list of appointments. Now, in this template, I've already created a continuous form blank one right there. It's called continuous F, so we're going to use that. If you don't know how to do a continuous form, i got videos on that. Also, go watch how I built the blank template, and it'll explain it in more detail. All right, again, there's links down below in the template section. So I'm going to copy and paste this guy, and this is going to be the appointment F, the appointment form. Right-click, design view. Let's add in the fields from the appointment table. First, we have to bind the form, right? Double-click on the properties. Go to record source, pick appointment T. Now this form is bound to the appointment table. I'm going to delete the stuff that's in here right now. And we're going to bring in the fields from the appointment table. So go to Add Existing Fields, click, Shift-click, drag them all over, drop them in the Details section. Now we're going to use a trick that one of my students, Scott, taught me. We're going to right-click anywhere on those fields, go to Layout, and then Tabular. Then adjust them all like that, slide them over to the left. I'm going to click off of them, then click on the text box portions, make them all smaller like that. They come in all big because the notes field is a long text field. That's okay. Now let's go up to the Arrange tab and go Control Padding None. That squeezes them all up next to each other. Now we're going to select everybody and turn off that layout. All right, right click, Layout, Remove Layout. We just used it to get them the way we wanted, right? Now they're just individual boxes. This is the way I like them. I don't like leaving layouts on. I'll use a layout, arrange them the way I want, and then I'll turn the layout off. Okay? But now we can arrange this stuff the way you want to see it. Just ID for the label. All right? Make that. We, we could have resized this stuff while it was still in layout mode, but that's okay. I like to make these guys gray. That indicates that you can't change that. Right? Description. Do that. Start date and time. Let's change the format of those guys, because right now, here, let me give you a preview of what this looks like right now. Let me bring that detail section up from the bottom. Let's save this. Let's close it and open it up to see what we got. Okay, see, these guys come in really wide. We don't need right down to the, the second in the time there. Let's shorten that up a little bit. And yeah, we'll get rid of some of this blank space in a second here. All right, so design view. What do we want to set for the date time format for these guys? Select them both, right click, properties. All right, while you got them selected, you can put the prop, the property format in here for them at the same time. I like to see, for appointments, I like to see the date and the time, but only like hours and minutes. So let's go, let's go, um, M -M -D -D -Y -Y -H -H colon N -N, and then AM slash PM, just like that. All right. Month, day, year. Of course, if you're in Europe, you can flip that if you want to. All right? Hours and minutes. Remember, N for minute. And then AM, PM on the end. Okay? Save it. And let's take a peek at what we got. And it still, still doesn't fit in there. Let's make these a little bit wider. All right. Notes. Notes can come down here. I'll tell you how uh, why in a minute. All right? We can make these guys wider. Nope, not you. Move you over here. Make these guys wider. Like that. Okay, and nobody's on the grid, are you? See, that's the one thing I don't I don't like about the layout is it doesn't put anybody on the grid. 
All right, so si uh, align to grid. See, now everyone's lined up on the grid. Right click, size to grid. Okay. No, nobody ever wants to lay up on the grid nicely. <laughs> okay, priority, you can come back this way now. Notes, you can sit down here and behave yourself. Okay, slide that up, slide that up. You can come over here, do that. Uh, you're way over there. Bring that in. All right. Let's make this so we can read it. Format. And I spent a lot of time covering this kind of formatting stuff in my Access Beginner 1 class. It's free. It's three hours long. It's on my website. There's a link down below. Go watch it. If I just did anything that confused you, changing colors and formats and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got. Close this. I like to close it and open it every time. All right. That looks a lot better. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the day of the week in there too. So if you want to make these a little bit bigger, just a little, just a touch, like maybe that much bigger. I like to select these and then resize them together, even though I'm going to have to move it because that way I make sure they're both the same size. You move them together. Okay. And now what we'll do with that format is we'll right click properties and then we'll add in front of that, we'll go DDD. That's the three-digit code for the day of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but only the first three characters. All right, I got videos on the format property, too. Go watch those if you don't want to learn more about this stuff. All right, now let's see what we got. Close that, close that. Save changes, yes. Open it up. Looks better. Now you can very quickly and easily see that's a Saturday. Oh, wait, I made this one on a Sunday. We're going to have to change that. We'll make that for the 8th, which is Monday. All right? For the 8th, Monday. All right, looks good so far. Now these notes down here in the bottom, let's make these, let's make this a little bit bigger. And what I usually try to do is I try to make that look like, let's see, where is it? I've got one, I think, in the contact form. Let's see. Yeah, 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 there it is. I make it look like the little yellow uh, uh, sticky pad, notepad, right? So let's go to design view over here. And is that notes? And that's notes. Oh, guess what? It's the same named field. We can just copy and paste it. Watch this. Delete you, all right? Come over here, copy, paste. As long as the field is named the same thing, you don't have to change any other properties. And there you go. Okay, save it. And you can give it that sunken shadowed effect. I do that in some of my other classes too, but we're not going to get that fancy right now. Okay, let's take a look at our appointments again. All right, looks good. Now, this is bound to whatever record you're on up here. So it's kind of a training issue. I know it's a little confusing for some people, but this is a continuous form. I like to put notes down in, down in the footer or even up in the header. And what that does is when you click on something, it now, okay, this is the Star Trek note, right? And if I go back up here, you can see that's the Jim Smith note, see? That's how it's bound that way, okay? Okay. So that's pretty much the basic, simple way to put together an appointment calendar form like this. All right, we need a way to get to it from the main menu. So design view. Let's add a button, all right? Command button. Drop it down here. Form operations. Open a form. Next. Appointment form. Next. Let's uh, show all the records. Next. All right, appointments. And give it a name. Appointment button. I'll just abbreviate that one. That's okay. And we'll put appointments right under here. Like that. Not so big. All right. Close that main menu up. Save it. Yes. Open it back up again. Appointments. There's my appointment calendar. You can slide it over here if you want to. Wherever you want to put it. All right. Save it. Now, if you want to change this guy so that you only see appointments in the future, right? When you open this up, you don't want to see your past appointments. Okay, you can make a query to do that. You could put a filter on in here, but that's a little more work. Let's say whenever you open up this appointment form, you want to only see your future appointments. All right, so we'd make a query to filter the data. That's what queries are for. All right, create query design. Bring in my appointment T. All right, bring in the star that brings in all the fields. And now I'm going to say, let's say that the end date time has to be less than right now. All right, because you could be in the middle of an appointment and still want to see it. Or maybe, maybe you don't want to see appointments after they're, let's say, three days old. Okay? So you've got a couple days so it still show up on there. So you can type in your notes or do whatever you want to. But you don't want to see them on your calendar, on your, on your list form there, 
if they're a certain age or older. So let's bring in end date time. I'm going to turn off the show button because I don't want to see duplicates, duplicates of this field. That's what that does. All right, you, you don't want to see an appointment t dot end date time. Okay, the criteria. Now, if you've never done a query with a criteria before, all right, go watch that video right now. I got one. I'll put a link down below, query criteria. Okay, we're going to say that the end date time has to be greater than or equal to today's date minus three. Okay, so take today's date, February 5th, subtract three from it, so February 2nd. Okay, so only show me appointments that have ended more recently or will end more recently than three days ago. See what I'm doing? I'm backing up three days and showing me everything after that point. So greater than or equal to three days ago. All right, so I'll save this. This will be my appointment. Appoint, I can't spell today. Appointment Q, appointment query. All right, save that. And now let's run that query. Oops, sorry. Run that query. Now let's put some dates in here that, uh, all right, let's put uh, old appointment. This is from 1-1. One, 1-2 one. Uh, one, it ended. Okay. Now if I close this query and reopen it, I shouldn't see that one. See, it's not there. It's still in the table. Okay, there's the table, but it's not going to show up in my query now, which means it won't show up on my appointment form. Uh, it is. Okay. Ah, why Why is it still showing up here? Anybody? All right, I jumped ahead, but that illustrates an important point. I forgot to do what? Raise your hands. Okay. I forgot to change where this form is getting its data from. It's still bound to the table. Okay. So I'm going to see just the stuff in the query. That's what I want to see. So I'm going to change the record source, design view, come in here, change this to appointment queue. The record source property is now appointment queue. So now when I open this up, save it. Now when I open it up, I'll only see the new stuff. Okay. Now, since you guys are beginners, I'm going to say you're going to have to either go back to the table to see your old stuff, if you want to go back and look at the old stuff, or you can make a second form that shows everything. Um, you can change that record source with some VB code. I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. You can put a little button down here that says show current appointments or show old appointments or show all appointments. All right, we'll do that in the extended cut too. Okay, so we can open this form up to see our appointments. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we only have two records in here. When you get more records in here, you'll see this. Um, this data isn't sorted in any particular way. If I put another appointment in here and I put it in here for, let's say, um, 2-7. And it's okay, so 12. So this is going to put it in at 12 p.m. So that's still a bit too wide. All right, let me put it in 12, 7 at 3 p.m. See, it's coming in as noon, so the 12, if I put a 12 in there, it's just a bit too wide. I'm to make these a little bit wider. Okay, so 2, 7, let's make this 2, 7 at 4 p.m. All right, if I close this and then reopen it again, all right, I want to see these sorted, the most recent ones up top, okay? So let's go into our query that we designed, design view. Okay, bring in start date time now, hide it so we don't have to look at it, and then let's sort this guy ascending. All right, so the oldest appointments, which should be the next one, unless you've got old stuff in there, will show up at the top. Stuff that's way in the future will be on the bottom. All right, save that, close it. Now when I open this guy up, now it's sorted properly, 6th, 7th, 8th. Okay. And yes, you can change this with a, a sort in here. You can right-click, sort oldest to newest there. You can right-click, sort over here if you want to sort by the description field. All right, that's one of the nice things about using Axis is you got complete control over all your data. Okay, one more thing I'd like to do, and that's print out a little calendar for myself, right? Now, I'm not going to cover how to print in a monthly format. That takes a lot of work. Access doesn't have that feature built in. I do cover that in my calendar seminar. All right, got a full seminar on my website where I show you how to make a printable and a form, all right, that are laid out like a monthly calendar. That takes a little work, but I show you how to do it in the seminar, okay? For today, we're just going to do a simple report that's got a list of our coming up stuff, okay? So let's go to create, report design. We're going to base this report off of that query that we made, all right? This way, we're only going to see 
the relatively new stuff. I'm going to say the new stuff, even though we know it's going to be stuff that's maybe a day or two old as well. Okay. Or if you want, you can make another query that's just future stuff. So when you're printing it out, you're just seeing the future dates. In fact, let's do that for our printed version. Let's make another one of these. I'm going to copy this query. Copy, paste. Let's call this appointment future queue. Okay. Right click, design view. This guy, I'm going to say I want, let's get rid of end date time. I want only future appointments for this one. So the criteria has got to be greater than date. So greater than today. So you'll see today's stuff. All right. So if it's 10 o'clock and you had a 9 o'clock appointment and you forgot about it, it'll still show up on your daily printout. Okay. So greater than today's date. So greater than today at midnight. So save that appointment future queue. Now we'll use the appointment future queue for this guy's record source. And there it is. Okay. Let's bring in the fields. This is our printout. So we're going to go to uh, design, add existing fields. Let's bring them all in. Drop them over here. All right. We can do the same tricks we want to. Right click, layout, tabular. Slide them over. All right. And you can resize this stuff right in here if you want to. Now, you might not want appointment ID on your printout. Okay. Delete it. All right. We don't need that. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. And I think at this point, I am going to uh, get rid of the layout. Highlight. Right click. And we're going to remove the layout. Because I'm going to do some different stuff here. We don't need the description label. I'm going to put the start date time over here like this. And the end date time underneath it like this. And I'm going to put the description here. And the notes underneath it like so. And the priority can sit over here. Okay, and we're going to put above that, we're going to put a date time like that. Or if you want to put date slash time, that's okay. Get rid of that label. And we'll put right there, appointment. And then priority is okay. All right, let's see what we got so far. Slide this up like that. Let's save it. This will be our appointment R. Now, I'm getting this little guy over here. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that the report width is greater than the page width. All right, well, what are we looking at for margins here? Let's go to page setup, margins. Let's go with narrow margins. So that means we've got a left and right quarter inch. We can go a half an inch in. Now, this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So there's the edge of the page. So I can only really come out to there. All right, so the layout thing, you push this too big. So you got to bring this guy in. All right, eight and a half. Oh, actually, we can come out to about eight because it's a quarter inch on both sides. And once you do that, you should notice that little green thingy goes away. Okay, do this like that. And I'm going to, let's do this. Let's bold both of those. Oh, format. Let's bold those. All right, the start time and the description. Okay, and let's make these guys black so we can actually read them. Okay, let's highlight everybody. Right click, size to grid. That's one of my pet peeves. I like to size everything to the grid. Okay, let's save it, close it, take a look at what we got here. I'm going to find that report. Where are you? Right there, appointment R, right click, and then print preview. That's how I like to see them. Okay, got some work to do. Looks okay so far. First thing, let's turn all these borders off. We got to make our date time formatted and that alternating background colors. I don't, I hate that alternating background color. So first up, let's highlight all these guys. Go to format, shape outline, transparent that turns those borders off second let's set the background colors in here that back color right there dot 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 go to standard colors and pick white then we're going to copy that that's the color code tab paste in the alternating background color if you want that where it goes back and forth between white and gray white and gray that's fine i don't like it sometimes yeah not all the time no and the last thing was that format for these okay i am going to let me think about this for a second here. I was going to say format the start date time with just the three-digit uh, uh, day of the week that we had and then not do it on the end date. 
or just maybe even just put the time. But then if you do have something that spans multiple days, yeah, you want to see the same format in there. So with a little more advanced programming, you can make it so this one shows the full date and time, and this one just shows the time. So this will say, you know, uh, Sunday, March 14th, 2 p.m., and then this one will say end time will just say 4 p.m. All right. Maybe I'll throw that in the extended cut. Maybe. I'm not promising that one. That's a little, that's a little more weird. Let's just go format right here. DDD space MM. You could just do M slash D slash YY if you want to. That'll give you the one digit month day. So if it's if it's January 1st, you'll just get one slash one. You won't get zero one slash zero one. Okay. And then the time HH. And, and if you want 24-hour time, if you like that, if you're military or you just like a 24-hour clock, you don't have to put the AM, PM, AM slash PM on the end like that. All right, let's save it. Let's uh, let's left align everybody because I know these are going to come in right aligned. Save it, close it. Once again, let's print preview. And there we go. It still needs to be a little wider. It's still a bit too narrow. Design view. Fortunately, we got plenty of space in here. Let's just select all this, go like that, go like this, and and I cover all this formatting of the forms and stuff in my beginner classes. So it's all stuff I've covered a million times. All right, there we go. How about a little line underneath that? All right, design view. Widen this guy out. Bring this down a little bit. Grab a line from in here. Drop a line right there. Draw it across. You'll never get it exact the first try. I mean, sometimes. Some of you will. I won't. <laughs> I never do. And there we go. And leave maybe a little bit of gap there. You can leave as much space as you want in here. Okay. Now, since this is a report, this notes field will grow as big as it needs to be vertically. So if you've got lots and lots of notes in there, that will get bigger. All right. There's a can grow property under format. Find it in here somewhere. There's can grow. It's set to yes. Also, the detail section itself has a can grow, can shrink. It will not shrink. The default is off. Lots of people ask me, why won't it get smaller if there's no data in there? Because you got to turn can shrink on for both the field and the section it's in. That's a, another sticking point. People ask me that one all the time. I think I have another video on that one. I'm not sure. I know I cover it in my classes. If I got a tech help video for it, I'll either make one soon because everyone asks me that question. Or if I already have one, I'll post it down below. I don't feel like looking for it right now. Okay. <laughs> Save that. Close it. Check it again. Print preview. Beautiful. Looks good. There's your your upcoming appointments. All right. You won't see the older ones. Let's make sure. Appointment T. All right. I got one in there from 1-1. One, one. That's not showing up. Okay. So close that. Now we got to open it from in here. So I'll put a button right down here on the bottom of the appointments. Design view. All right. There's my button. Drop it down there. Report operations, preview report, uh, the appointment R, and then I don't I don't often use these picture buttons. I, I usually stick to text, right? Print upcoming appointments because text is so much more. Print APT button. Print uh, text is just so much more descriptive, right? I mean, you could do buttons and then you can put control tip text to show you what the button means if you hover over it. If you if you really jammed for space then yeah go ahead all right save it close it all right this remember this form is going to show me everything that is three days old or newer so i don't see the super old stuff i can print upcoming appointments there it is right there now if you want to actually send this to the printer click the print button okay all right that's a that's a pretty good lesson right i showed you how to make an appointment table i showed you how to make a continuous form to show your your recent and upcoming appointments and you could do that in here too in the caption that's sometimes what these forms are good for this caption property right recent and upcoming appointments all right save that now when you open this guy up you'll see it says recent and upcoming appointments and then on this all right instead of appointment r um, you could put it in the caption or you could actually put it on top of the report itself if you want to all right i'll just throw it in the caption for now right upcoming appointments upcoming meeting today right and and the future there so now you know it's upcoming appointments so you don't look at this one and go well why is one missing over there well because it's 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 a day old which is designed to be on here okay then you can put little notes on your forms and stuff to tell people what's going on okay did we learn something today was that good want to learn more let's see what we're going to do in the extended cut want to learn more 
There's an extended cut that's 40 minutes long that covers lots more with this appointment database. First, we'll have it so that when you type in the start date, it'll default the end date to one hour after that. So if you type in 3 p.m., it'll default the end date to 4 p.m. Then we'll make little buttons that you can click on, little links, right? You can add a day. You can add 15 minutes. All right, once you know those two, you can pretty much figure the rest of them out, subtract a day, add an hour, that kind of stuff. We'll make it so you can switch the data that's in the form. Do you want to see recent and future appointments, future appointments only, or all appointments? Then we'll program the report so it shows what's on the form. So if you change the form here, it'll change the report. And on the report, if the end time is the same date as the start time, it'll just put the time there. So now you can see it's just 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Obviously, if it's a different day, it'll show the full date. And then we'll add the customer to the appointment form so that we can assign each appointment to a customer if we want to. And then we'll show up that information on the appointment printout too. And for the first time ever, I'm doing a double extended cut. I have a second extended cut for gold members. So if you're going to join, consider becoming a gold member. This one's a lot more heavy into programming. So if you're an advanced user, you might want to consider the gold membership. In this one, we'll check for conflicts. So if you type in an appointment and there's already an appointment in that time slot, it will yell at you. It'll say, hey, there's already an appointment for this one. Are you sure you want to add it? It'll let you add it. You're the boss. But at least it warns you that you've got a conflict. We'll set it up so you can avoid weekends and after hours, right? Saturdays and Sundays, anything before 9 or after 5. And, of course, you can control all that. It's your database. We'll make it so you can double-click on the start time, and it will find the next available appointment slot, right? So if it's Thursday and your next available appointment is Tuesday at 10 a.m., boom, there it goes. You don't have to go looking on your calendar to figure out when is my next available appointment. That alone is worth the price of membership. That's a pretty cool trick. Then we'll make it so that you can type in just the hour for the end time. So if you type in, you know, you pick you pick 3 p.m. on Tuesday for the start time, you hit tab, and you can just type in 5 p.m., and boom, it grabs a date from the start time. So that's a little trick, too. So that's in the gold member bonus. Okay? First time I'm doing that, I'm giving it a try. See if I can get some more gold members here. <laughs> How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.